welcome to Bowtie Sometimes Cool, myself, Ashley, and Ed. Are you there, Ed? I'm there. It's a bit odd. It's a Tuesday evening, but I'm definitely here. And you're in your attic. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I'm in my, at- I'm been- in my attic as well. Yeah. <laughs> been- they put you up in the attic for this one. Okay. Yeah. And so this evening, <laughs> we are joined by a very special guest, singer, songwriter, Oggie. Evening, Oggie. Hello. How are you doing? Very good. No, thank you for joining us. Now, for those that don't know, Oggy, um, on most social media, we refer to as Oggy Music, a, a prolific singer and songwriter um, who's already had two albums, Undeniable Chemistry and Throwback Season, and also has another album coming out on the 25th of this month, 25th of November. So thanks for coming and having a chat with us about that and your career to date. So that's what we're going to cover off this evening, if that's OK with your good self. No worries at all. So, Oggy, first things first, a rather predictable question, but when did you realise that music was something that you wanted to do and that was going to be your career path? Do you know, I was very, very lucky that I'm, I realised from an early age, and I'm talking like four or five, you know, um, I, 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 we're, you know, we grew up with the most influential people and I think obviously at that age for me, was Michael Jackson. And the first album that I'd ever fallen in love with was Off The Wall. So, do you know what I mean? I just, you know, I wanted to, you just want to be him. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So literally from that age onwards, and then I think, you know, the kids from fame was probably the next huge influence. Like, you know what I mean? I just wanted to be in a performing arts school. Then I had to dance and sing after watching that show. So I just feel like, yeah, from an early, early age, I, I always knew that this was what I wanted to do. It's funny, you mentioned in Fame there. I didn't even realise at the time. I mean, I do vaguely remember watching it, but like Janet Jackson was in it. It just, the penny didn't drop. Yeah, she, Janet Jackson was in there. Sort of. She played Cleo, yeah. 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 Now, I remember just follow, following on from that then, really, in terms of, you know, as you say, it was an early age. Uh, I think it was on Twitter that I saw a picture that you posted not so long ago in your, in your cap and gown. Uh, which was that you'd done a ah. degree in commercial music. Yeah, I did. Um, I went to, basically, I I studied at Westminster University. Um, I I did A-level performing arts and theatre arts, but I did them in my school. Um, uh, Our school had like a sixth form, so we didn't go to an outside college. I just stayed in school till I was 18. And um, I just, uh, ironically enough, there was a guy that lived on my estate and um, his mum, he he owned his own little independent record label. His mum's walked past me one time. That everybody around knew that I did music because it was always performing in a little group that I was in. And she said to me, you know, what are your plans after school finishes? And I was like, oh, I'm just, you know, just going to try and be a pop star sort of thing. And she's like, well, maybe you should just, you know, you can do that and study. And I was uh, adamant that I was not going to do any more studying after performing arts and their arts because it was long. But um, yeah, I just thought, well, you know what, I'll give it a go and uh, managed to get into Westminster at the time. So, yeah, and it was it was one of the best decisions I'd ever made, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was good. It was a good course. Yeah. Now, I think I've, I've, I know I mentioned it when we were chatting before. I, Kate, you came on my radar because of Thrill of Life, uh, which yeah. was a fantastic show. And you did that for, for quite a number of years. And not just yeah. in the UK. I mean, that was all over the place as well, wasn't it? I think you went to Japan and what have you. Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to tour Japan, which I think was probably one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, I had so much fun whilst I was in that show, but the Japan tour was extra special. And um, we toured there twice, actually, uh, 2012 and 2014. But yeah, I've got some great memories. It was great because a lot of the times when you're a solo artist, you don't get to work with other artists and a lot of the people that were in Thriller were other artists as opposed to just being musical theatre you know and because of the style of the songs they needed artists to be in the show because you know it was a, it was these songs were for an artist by an artist produced by you know people that made that style of music so you needed people that could could do that live and it was just really great to actually be able to work with a core group of people that were into that and musicians as well so it was cool it was fun so you know with Thriller that it's, it's like one big family so yeah. once you're kind of in Thriller you're kind of you know in it for life like we even worked together quite recently funnily enough even though the show's not on we did um, a cover of Man in the Mirror uh, oh, for um, uh, which actually featured Saida Garrett the original songwriter 
um, and it was released as a single. So we performed that together at the um, MJ30, which just happened on Michael Jackson's last birthday, which was really, really cool. It was great to work with everybody again. I um, I had the cameo from uh, Cedar Garrett. I, I ordered it myself. Like, it wasn't really a surprise. Ooh. But, um, yeah. yeah, so I, I did that. But, yeah, she's probably written two of, not my favourite, Sorry if you're listening and saying this, but I'm pretty sure, sure you won't be. But <laughs> yeah. not, not my favourite, but um, yeah, Man in the Mirror and uh, Keep the Faith, really great tracks. Both. Oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm so glad you said that because so many people don't know that she wrote Keep the Faith. And, you know, it's, it's one of the most beautiful songs on Dangerous. It's actually one of the songs that I know when I'm feeling down in the dumps, I've got like a little Spotify playlist of songs yeah. that I have and keep the faith is on there and so many people don't know that she wrote that song and it's another one of those phenomenal songs from mj that no one talks about as much so i'm really glad that you pointed that out oh no that is a that is one of my favorites off the dangerous album i mean the lyrics yeah. on it are just yeah. amazing like they're so beautiful it's a really heartfelt message in that one so you mentioned about the artist there. i mean how did that it shows my naivety here really but how did you get that gig how did that come about was it, it was like open auditions or how did was it do you know uh, what um I, so i at the time i would i was doing backing vocals at ronnie scott's for a really long time for an artist called natalie williams um she i don't know if you if you haven't heard it she has a really really dope album called secret garden that was out around that time so um, yeah i was doing backing vocals for for ages and then i remember i got uh, um, asked if I could and Ronnie Scott's were opening up their um, up upstairs bar again and um, I got asked if I wanted to do like a little night on their upstairs bar so I was like yeah why not and um, uh, my sister is a filmmaker uh, she had just had a really successful short film at the time um, and so we thought let's team up together do this film and music night called The Soundtrack um, so all of her friends would come and show independent films and then me and my band and a few, um, would uh, perform after and then all the singer mates I knew would just come and like freestyle so I did that for like a year and I think we moved venues and Adrian Grant who actually um, created Thriller Live had come down to one of the nights and seen me sing and he was like you know what I always had a Michael song in the set no matter what uh, it was probably be human nature to be honest with you but um, he said to me like you know I feel like you should audition for Thriller so it was that like, cool and then I auditioned and that was it so. Now oh, Adrian Grant that's a name that I definitely recognise because I think I've seen that on the on the on a few books um, I'm just trying yeah, to. Yeah well Adrian was a very very good friend of Michael's and, yeah, um, he's, he's, he's written a few books on him, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Adrian, but I do believe that he did used to do one of the fanzines, which is possibly King, King magazine. Ah, and, yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, it. I believe I could be wrong, but I do believe that he used to do that. And he actually, you know, um, they were they were good friends. So Adrian, I remember he interviewed Michael Jackson backstage um, for I think it was on the set of Stranger in Moscow, if I can remember rightly. Um, and you know, so uh, um, he was one of these trusted people that he knew. So, yeah. No, that thrill live must have been. I mean, I went there. I, I went. I saw it in Manchester. The crowd was just going crazy, which is one of the great mm. things about it. Because of course, you're all there because you like Michael Jackson. So that's always exactly. a good start. So, but in terms of audience participation, no doubt they were singing every single song. But there was was there any particular. I remember Smooth Criminal was really popular on the evening. Was there anything else at all? Uh, I mean, have you got any ones that stood out as getting always pretty good crowd reactions? Yes, there was this section that we used to call the disco section, which was kind of like um, loosely based on Studio 54. Um, and um, it, it was always, I think it's almost all of our favourite section of the show because we got to impro a little bit. For the dancers, they got to impro a little bit. Um, and uh, we sung just like it was the songs from uh, Off the Wall. So we had a... Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which is my favourite, favourite number to perform. Um, Rock With You was part of that section as well. Um, and uh, Can You Feel It was also part of that section where we actually get to perform all the leads performers in ensemble and sing together. So that was great. And Don't Stop was originally an ensemble piece as well. So, you know, we all finally got to be on stage together singing these amazing songs. And it, I just found it electric. It was just a really, really great moment of the show. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, to be fair, you've gone on to, you, you mentioned doing backing vocals, and I think you've done that for a few artists, I, mean, I think like Amy Winehouse as well and what have you. Um, but more recently as well, the Jacksons themselves, 
Now, before I talk yeah. to you about that, I just want to say, <laughs> I, I got, I tweeted Tito Jackson once and he liked it. And I thought I'd he, re- reach the top then when he liked my tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you to actually be on stage with the Jacksons now, this is like, must be dream come true territory. Um, it was like, to this day, I will never, ever, ever, ever not be grateful um, for being able to, you know, be someone from a working class family in South East London, then to finally kind of, you know, go full circle and end up on stage with the people that actually made me want to do music was just, uh, I, I just, I don't know, it just it will never, it will never feel real. <laughs> I'll always have to go back and look at videos and like, because it, but it was honestly the most, everything that you ever dream something like that is going to be, it was exactly that. And everything that as fans that we expect them to be like, they were exactly that. You know, when people have reached that level of success, you can understand why, because they're such nice, humble, you know, uh, beautifully spirited people. Um, uh, They are exceptional performers. And, you know, uh, the songs to just, I I don't know, it's indescribable, it's magic. Like the very first show that I did, um, this is so bizarre, but one of my best friends, and it's funny enough, it's her birthday today, no joke. But um, one of my best friends when I was young, she moved to um, Birmingham. And the first show that I did with them was in Brummie. And so I remember on the way there, we'd always said to her, oh, you know, I was doing another thing called the Hassan Garage Orchestra. She was like, oh, you know, let me know when you're going to be in Brummie. So I'm on my way to do the first show for the Jacksons. And I'm like, oh, God, I should message Sarah. I'm like, I'm going to be in Brummie and I'm going to be on stage with the Jacksons. She's like, no way. And the funny thing was that her memories mainly of me, are us in primary school and me dancing to Michael Jackson songs. So it was just surreal. So she ends up coming to watch the show with her partner. And I just, it was the most surreal thing to look in the audience and see one of my closest friends from when I was like five who remembers me, you know, loving MJ to, you know, looking on the side of me and there's Jermaine Jackson, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it was just the most bizarre thing. Again, got off stage and just burst into tears. The first show I was like, this is unreal. Like, what is my life? It was the mo- just, you know, nothing but gratitude. And just, you know, I genuinely believe that if you manifest things and you just go for it and keep doing things for the right reasons, they have a way of just conspiring, you know what I mean? And honestly, really, really grateful. Brilliant, brilliant story. Oh, but what I wanted to talk to you about in relation to the Jackson, because I, Jackson's um, tour, because I've seen a couple of videos from one of the nights. I'm thinking who was on the stage with you. It was, um, well, Tito was there and Marlon, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, but it, it, on the side, on the side of the stage, I do believe we had... A Janet Jackson in the in the audience. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I'm it's you know the funny thing is I'm the biggest, biggest Janet Jackson fan. Like it's not even a joke. I she's again, she's just like one of my heroes. I just adore her. So the um the funny thing is, I mean I won't go into too much, but on the day, a few of the team are aware that I'm a huge Janet fan. And I had no idea at all that she was going to be there. No idea. And um, where we were, I think it was in Essex, possibly, I believe, at a gig. And um, so the whole day it had been raining. It was really stormy. And I was like, you know what? Like, do you know what I mean? I'm just going to take it easy. Normally I get really nervous before a show. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to chill today. Like, it's raining. You know, it's cool. Like, but I'll be fine. And then half eight, um, one of the management comes over. And he's like, oh, Oggy, just to let you know, Janet Jackson is going to be here and I was like I think I swore I was like <laughs> and he was like no I'm dead serious she is and she's on it. she's going to be here very soon and I was just I mean I can't even explain that feeling my heart just went straight into my mouth I was sweating I was nervous I was anxious I was like literally I called up my best friend she had to calm me down and she's like dude just go there do your job called up another friend and then I felt like right I have to be professional. So I went onto the stage, like literally before a, a good, maybe 15, 20 minutes before we were starting and some of the band was setting up anyway. And I just, I just want to get a feel of the stage so I can remember what I'm doing because yeah. my head is not, it's not in tune with my body. <laughs> and um, so trying to get back into the vibe and I swear to you, I'm not joking. I felt 
her presence come onto that stage, man. I'm not even joking. I felt it. And I was like, oh my God. And as I felt it, she kind of walks past and she sits down. And I didn't know what to do because she was on my side of the stage. So I think there's a little video online of literally just me, just like literally going, oh my God, oh my God. And I turn around in a circle and I'm just like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> and she waves back. And I just remember just like, I just couldn't believe it. And I had no idea why right? one of my really cool friends was um, part, of, part of the tour as well, was filming everything. So um, yeah, for the rest of it, I was like, right, get on with it, do the show, perform, be professional. I didn't want to keep staring at her throughout the concert, like, do you know what I mean? And whatever, but I got a chance to meet her for like two seconds afterwards and it was a dream come true. Uh, listen, I, I've watched those videos. Great performance by your good self, but I was just also really impressed that Johnny Jackson in the wings there, she was, <laughs> you could see her on some of it, the way it just, luckily it just seemed to focus right. And she was singing the words to pretty much everything, just going along with everything, you know, and she just, Every no, she was, song. yeah, absolutely loved it. Did, did the audience even know that she was there though? I, was it actually I believe even some of them did. I believe some of them did, yeah, yeah. Some twigs, I, I, yeah. When she came on there, I do remember people screaming, like, do you know what I mean? They just, you know, it's just, I'd, even from a distance, they could just tell she has this, whole aura about her um just a beautiful being and I, I could feel that there were people that were screaming when she came down so yeah I think some people knew well I feel that we've probably talked about the Jacksons enough I mean it, not that that's really possible <laughs> but to be fair you, know, that, you that, could go on forever though because yeah I you mean, could you could they are like the greatest performance family ever ever you know in history so it's you know it's, if you're going to talk about music do you know what I mean? They're going to come up for sure. So Absolutely. Well, maybe we could have future episodes on this. We'll pull you back. But I want to because <laughs> I'm very grateful for you giving us your, your time. I wanted to come on your onto your back onto your work and your projects and everything that you've got yeah, on the yeah. go. So we've listened to your music. I mean, it's wonderful. And we've li- been able to listen to a track as well, <laughs> Sweet Medicine, um, which is yeah. going to be in the upcoming album. Um, but I just wanted to hand over to Ed because I think Ed's got a couple of questions about um, what you do and how you go about doing it, really. So, OK, Oggy, so you've got the new yeah. album coming out later on this month. Just yes. really want to get into the Oggy mindset, really, and um, ask you, how do you go about sort of writing songs? Is it a flash of inspiration or do you have a method that you use? Um, definitely it's a combination of both. Like, um, I, for this particular album, inspiration was really um, kind of, like, vital. Um, the last, especially over the last couple of years during the pandemic, um, I, I, you know, I used to love songwriting a lot when I was growing up. I had a really great um, a music teacher called Julie Copeland, and she taught us to write songs from, like, 11. So I used, to, I used to love it, and I was constantly writing. But then when you're obviously doing loads of different stuff, I would only write when needed be, if that makes sense. So um, during the pandemic, I kind of like, I felt very inspired again, just because I had people around me that made me feel like that, that kind of helped me get through it all really. And so I started to just write for the love again, and um, just felt very inspired by things that were going on around me. And um, so, yeah, that is definitely key. Um, normally in terms of like, it can be anything. Sometimes I'll, just dream up melodies, do you know what I mean? When I'm walking down the street, um, you know, I'll watch a movie, um, it will be convers- conversation was a big deal this time around that would inspire things. And then other times, you know, people would just send me beats, you know what I mean? Like they'll send me like house beats mostly, R&B beats, garage beats, whatever. And um, I'll just kind of write to them, sometimes on the spot in the studio, sometimes at home, excuse me. So it would just be all different ways really. Excellent. And you've been in the um, in the music industry for years now, you with Thrill Alive and before that as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, as a consumer, looking at how we experience music, it's changed almost beyond recognition in the last 10 years or so with the advent of Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon mm-hmm. Music. So we've gone from sort of going to the record shop, shop buying CDs, LPs, whatever, to consuming it via our devices and streaming. I'm just wondering, as an artist, do you think that's made it more difficult for new artists to break into the industry? Um, I do feel it has made it a bit difficult. Um, it's, with everything, there's pros and cons. I feel like before, uh, it was harder in a way before, obviously with big, massive labels, there was such a huge, massive gap between us and them. 
but then it was easier because everything in some ways was all um we were all look we were all watching the same thing do you kind of get what i mean there was less to have to look for so back then you know you had your top of the pop so you see the uk or a chart show and you'd watch all of those um shows and you'd know who was out or where well, you'd get to see the music video this and that now everything is extremely fragmented so you're not even really sure where to look to find stuff um it's easier um to get things out yourself which is a massive plus you don't have to rely on labels anymore you can put your own music out you can make your own videos you don't need a big 10 grand budget to to make a music video anymore but at the same time it's extremely fragmented so it's difficult to find new stuff like you know so um yeah it's it, there's always going to be pros and cons i think okay thank you very much indeed cheers no worries um, you just mentioned about your videos there <laughs> this, I, I was looking at that i mean there's bring bring the loaf back yes alone, yeah. alone at christmas and uh just a little just a little love just a little um, love yeah, I mean, I really like those videos. I really do like them. I mean, oh, that, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, when I say that, that almost sounds like I don't like the other ones. No, I really do. But, you know, those in, those in particular. And then, of course, cool. the tracks like Follow Me and, and, and You and Undeniable Chemistry. I really love those. But those, I mean, the videos, the films, the, the music videos are really top notch as well. Um I mean, it's, are they costly things to produce? Or, or, well, Again, I, I've, I've just been very, very lucky. Like, I've got family in the business that come, um, and so they kind of helped out with a few things. A lot of the times with me, like, you know, um, me, it's weird. Me, my brothers and sisters and I, and mainly me and my sister, we grew up on watching so many different types of films and little B-movies and things. So sometimes we were just, when we first started, she first started helping me out with a few videos, we would just shoot things for fun. You know, what I mean, like there was a couple of that were literally just, you know, me and my friends in a park or just chilling with just us with a camera and just edit them and put them together. And we like the fact that they looked a bit like B movies. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, um, then you know, my brother um, uh, got into directing as well, and he acts, and so he shot the video for Just a Little Love. Do you know what I mean? And again, we would kind of go the guerrilla style stuff, and we'd almost think of the plots on the spot. So they were really fun videos to make. And a friend of mine called Shay, um, Shay Carroll, um, actually did the video for Bring the Love Back. And um, but we kind of we we thought about that, and Shay really wanted to make a music video. Um, we were we were shooting a few things uh, before at the time anyway. I think we'd got I was managing an artist for a little while called Elizabeth um, Talazina, and we shot a really cool video for her. So we came up with the concept for Bring the Love Back, and um, we yeah we just kind of. Uh, different little spots in London and it is actually a really, really cool little clip. So it was quite lucky. I love the, I think it's just little love. Is it the one when you're in, when you're in the cafe and you've got the, yes, the, the yeah, my, my brother, yeah, my brother directed that. My younger brother, Nelson directed that video. Oh my God. The first 20 seconds of that is just amazing. I did, the reason I say that is because it's, it's reversed, isn't it? With the match. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This way. And that was all his idea. I don't know what, I can't remember why we came up with that, but the match became like a central point of that video. Um, so, and I, yeah, it's a really cool little clip actually. I'm really glad you guys got to see that. So, yeah, love it, love it, love it. So, um, yeah, this brings us very much on to, but we've talked about how you go about writing a song. One other thing, question I've got for you whenever we see anybody in a studio, even Michael Jackson previously, they're there and they've got mixes in front of them and there's like, Thousands of thousands of buttons. Did that, do you use thousands of them? Come on now. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there must be only about three or four that you use. Surely. I tell yeah. you what, when you are in a bigger studio, yes, because what will happen is like all um, uh, every single instrument and every single vocal is on an individual um, uh, de- uh, in- individual part of the desk. So a lot of the times, you know, you, you, you'll double track your vocals for the chorus or you'll record specific, like, you know, a verse or certain lines even on different tracks. And then it's just a case of leveling that and that's just the vocals. Um, then you'll um, have, you know, all the different things for the instruments. So, um, yeah, you, you do end up using a lot of them when you're in a much bigger studio. At me, myself. I actually record a lot of my vocals at home now. You know what I mean? Um, I used to do that when I was young anyway, and then I completely stopped. But during the pandemic, I started again. So I, you know, I come to think of it, yeah, I do use different channels for different parts, verses, choruses, half of us, this and that, and edit and, and cut things. So you do end up using all of them. 
No, I mean, you, I jokes. I mean, I, I, I kind of said that in a sort of a jokey manner because I have seen where some people have done videos on YouTube where they've broken down tracks, and you'll sort of see the software that you're using, and it be you know yeah. what you think is a fairly simple song is broken down on the screen into like thirty or forty different streams, if you like, yeah, um, and so they can yeah, isolate yeah, certain yeah, vocals thought... out and instruments and so on. Yeah, it's just wanting to get things perfect. Like I found when I if when I used to go to the studio to record, like everything would always be on a time and on a budget. So you know, I kind of you know, back in the day would like, just go in. You know, you record your vocal, you go out and whatever. Recording at home, though, funnily enough, because you've got more time, I uh, you just want to perfect everything over and over again to the point where you completely become so panicky. So then I could, you know, it made more sense now why so many people would have so many different channels. Then because you, 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 when you've got this, the time and the space, you want to make sure that everything is perfect. So, um, yeah. Talking about getting things perfect, you have your new album coming out on the 25th of this month, 25th November. So yes. How long is it time, taking you to sort of pull that together? And uh, tell us a little bit about it. No worries. Um, right, so this is literally an exclusive like, uh, that it, you guys know that it's coming out on this date, and which is really, really cool. And um, I'm going to tell you guys what the album's called as well. Because um, the album's called Wings. And so that's the first. No one knows that. I've almost got a little bit nervous now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really, 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 really excited about this project. Um, I feel like it's probably the most mature um, project that I've done. Um, it's probably the most um personal projects that i've done um and i think it's the most um consistent uh like in, in the past with the other albums undeniable chemistry um I, I really enjoy that album but it was there's so many half of the album was recorded like together and then the other half were just certain songs that i've been saving to put together on an album in between doing other things so, um, but um, you know, it all ended up being this sort of up-tempo, fun album. It wasn't very personal. It was just more, you know, just wanted to make something that people could enjoy and had a really good vibe about it. Um, Throwback Season, to me, isn't really an album. It's like a mixtape. Like, I've been recording songs since like, since I was very, very young. And, you know, I had tons of, of, of back catalog that, you know, was never, able people were never able to hear so with that particular album um i just literally took stuff from my back catalog and threw it together and that which is why it was called throwback season so it's like a mixtape really this album really is an album it was recorded together and it was recorded as part of a journey and it was recorded over a span now i started just before the pandemic it's almost recorded over a span of like two and a half years and it feels like a consistent project that was made to work together and um so for me it's just it it, it it it's the album out of all of the stuff that i've done that i enjoy the most and you know i did it really for myself i didn't really pick music that was about you know oh uh people would expect this because I, I you know i come from more of a dance and garage background so it always thought oh, maybe people want this more or want that more and with this album i didn't really do that i just kind of used it to sort of just bear my soul and uh, i think it just makes it out of all three, the better body of work. So I'm looking forward to people hearing it. Well, we're, we're definitely looking forward to hearing it. Uh, thank you ever so much for that exclusive as well. So that's fantastic. No worries. Cool. <laughs> now, wh- how are we going to be able to buy this thing? Because I know going on really, I suppose, off the back of Ed's question as well, you know, streaming platforms as well. So uh, what's it going to be released on? How are we going to be able to? Um, it will be available every. It will be available on all digital music platforms. So it will be streamable. It will be downloadable. It will be on Apple, on iTunes, on Spotify, Deezer, all of those sort of stuff. It will be everywhere. So it would be cool. Um, I had a friend did mention to me about maybe doing some vinyl press ups, which is something I'll think about in the future. I've never done it with any albums before, so um, uh, but it's something that I'll think about. But yeah, it will be out there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. And obviously, um, like you guys have heard one song from it already, Sweet Medicine. So um, yeah, what do you guys think of that? Oh, I, I love it. Yeah, I know. Honestly, it's it's. I don't want to. Com- do you know what? I don't want to compare it to Michael Jackson. Sorry, I don't want to compare it to that. But I suppose that it, it does have that feel about it at the same time. I just love the I just love the track. It's just yeah, it's, oh, it's kind so of 
but it's what I wanted from you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've ticked the box for me. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, really, I'll be listening really to it or not. That. Well, again, like, you know, uh, 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 that makes me so happy. Like, it's funny because it was the, it was actually written during the pandemic, um, um, but it was the last song that I added to the album. Um, it, and um, I'm so happy it's, uh, that it got added. Um, originally, it was supposed to come out with me and the producer, um, but he's kind of like, he's a dance producer and he's changed his whole sound now. So he was like, you know what, you can have this as a single for yourself because I'm working on some new different stuff. So it was like, oh, you know, really grateful. But for me, it was like, I put it out as the first track that I wanted people to hear because I felt like the song was about, in a way it's about healing and using love to heal. Do you know what I mean? During a period that was difficult for all of us, do you know what I mean? During the pandemic. And that in a way sort of sums up the theme of the album. Um, so um, I, I thought it would be the, the, the best thing to put to, let people hear first so they get an essence of what the um, entire project ends up being about really, which is that, so, so yeah. So how, many, how many tracks are there? There's 12 tracks. 12 tracks, 12 tracks. 12 tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's plenty for us to get our teeth into, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the, um, the name of the album, Wings, where's that come from? Is it a name of a track on the album or is it a, just a concept, an idea you've had? Um. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. um, I, I think Wings really came from, uh, it was about, you know, when you think of Wings and you think of like uh, the concept of like eagles and birds, you know, they fly amongst everything. Do you know what I mean? You know, they fly amongst all of us and they, they see everything and they fly amongst things. And, you know, um, to overcome things is to rise above it. So really that was the concept of it. Do you know what I mean? We've gone through a difficult few years for everybody universally. Do you know what I mean? People have lost people. People have gone through stuff. We've dealt with things differently than we would. Do you know what I mean? And um, so I felt like Wings was, uh, it was a very strong title and uh, it sort of describes overcoming and, and rising above. And so that really, and that for me is really what this album is about. Do you know what I mean? And Sweet Medicine really is, is kind of like, using love as your healer. And I genuinely, without standing corner, believe that, you know, you have love in your life in any way, shape or form, that it can get you through anything. So, yeah. That's amazing. That sounds absolutely brilliant, Oggy. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. That might explain why your, your current uh, Twitter picture then, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, and it's funny because I think a lot of people must have just, I've changed my Twitter picture so randomly over the last, you know, couple of months, but I knew that eventually people would understand. So, um, yeah, I, kept, I thought like, you know, I want to put little key things out there. Do you know what I mean? Um, so then eventually people would go, ah, oh, I see, that makes sense. So, yeah. Now, Augie, before we sort of wrap up, we are wanting to do a Christmas quiz which will be a mastermind, okay. mastermind type quiz, yeah? Okay. So you're going oh, to choose to a, that. Yeah, you're gonna have to choose a specialist subject um, and there'll also be some general knowledge. And then what we're going to do is all our previous guests, plus a couple of other people that have uh, thrown their hat in the ring as well, are going to, uh, yeah, come on. We'll record them separately, build up the tension. Uh, so are you up for that? I'm down. Down yeah. like Judy Brown. Fabulous. Right. We'll put, right, hang on. I'll make a note. I'll make a note. Oggy on board. Now, would you have a? Would you go as far as to sort of throw out your specialist subject now? We, do you know what you want to? Well, it, it only, I feel like it, our specialist subject tonight has been the Jacksons, so let's stick to. Let's to stick with Jacksons yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be wrong not to, really, wouldn't it? Fair it would play. Just be Fair play. Play, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So, thank you for talking to us this evening, Augie. That was fantastic. We're gonna. Thank you for having me, man. It's been a wicked chat. Ah, fantastic. No, it really has been great. Uh, we're really looking forward to your album coming out and we'll be tweeting lots about that closer to time. And um, yeah, this will be released probably the week before, which is uh, yeah, yeah, exciting yeah, times, yeah. yeah? Yeah, it will be. Yeah. It'll be a, a, week, a, week, a, week and, a week and a day before. So uh, <laughs> really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. So we have been Bowtie Sometimes Cool. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from Ed. Goodbye, Ash. Goodbye, goodbye Ogie. <laughs> Yeah, and a good goodbye right. for all. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye for now. Bye.